welcome to Connected, your bilingual space. I am talking to you all the way from Santa Cruz, Bolivia in South America. I hope you had a great day and you're ready to enjoy your weekend with your loved ones, by yourself, going out, staying, whatever the case is, enjoy it. Um, I want to remind you also that you don't only see us through the Abby Ayala channel, but also you can see us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. start the show sharing with you a little bit of my feelings and my thoughts. Basically, I want to let you know that in order to make the show happen, we are a group of eight people that works every week and it's, it's possible to deliver uh, the work that we do for you. Also, I want to tell you that I feel immensely grateful to be able to connect with you and to make you connect with others. I strongly believe that what the world is lacking nowadays is exactly this, being able to know what others are doing, being able to be compassionate. And how do we do this? We, only, we are only able to be compassionate if we take the time to talk to somebody, to connect with the person, to listen, and to understand where they come from. Sometimes it's very easy to find the difference and always stay in our safe place and, you know, just listen to what we like, see what we like, but sometimes getting ourselves out of that comfort, it takes us to a, a more beautiful world and it takes us to a more um, warm kind of uh, lifestyle. So that's why I want to invite you today to think about that and also to thank you for being here and connect with me and let me do this kind of work for you. Um, we always hear people saying that every person it's a whole new world and just by thinking about this, about this deeply uh, it gives me the chips because it is really true indeed. Yes, we are different worlds but we need to connect them so we can all know where, how can we be better or how can we help each other. Um, our guest today is without a doubt a connected human being. She is a dedicated young woman that no matter where she is, she finds the way to do her magic and make her social work possible. Her name is Alexis Vargas and we are going to connect with her in Vancouver, Canada. Don't go anywhere, stay connected, we'll be right back. connected people. For the ones that just landed to the show, I want to tell you that today we are talking about social work from abroad. For, to talk up to us about that, I have a guest today that is talking to us from Vancouver, Canada. Her name is Alexis Vargas and she is um, living right now currently in Vancouver, but she is originally from Bolivia. She holds a master in public administration. She also graduated a diploma in law for children and adolescent rights. She, in Bolivia, uh, finished her studies on the engineering, uh, military engineering school in Bolivia. Uh, Alexis moved to Pittsburgh in the year 2011 and last year, 2017, she moved from Vancouver. I am so uh, happy, I am so proud to have her here today, it's a big pleasure for me and uh, Alexis, welcome to Connected, it's a pleasure again to have you here and thank you for the time that you're taking to spend with us. Um, Alexis, after reading and seeing all of your, uh, some, a part of your background, um, 
It's clear to me that since early age you have a, a love for social work. We can definitely say that social work is your thing. So please share with us how and when did you realize that you were made for this type of work? Yeah, no, thank you for having me. Um, so it's a pleasure to uh, stay connected with uh, with Bolivia. I always uh, enjoy these opportunities to be in touch with, with the community that I love because my heart is in Bolivia, even though I'm living here. Um, so yeah, I guess I, I would begin by uh, making a difference between uh, social work as a career and uh, you know this desire to help uh, people because that's been always in me and i think in many uh, bolivians heart is always there when you see uh, the vulnerable groups living in bolivia and uh, all we know about bolivia it's easy for us to feel compassion towards these people so that's been always in me with church my family you know in any holiday we would do something about it uh, dinners or things like that i think it's very common um, i don't take credit out of it but um, i think uh, as I was growing up, and the reason why I studied engineering is because I didn't feel uh, exposure to social work as much as I was exposed in the U.S. Uh, by uh, being in Bolivia. Uh, even though there's more need, I think I, I haven't been exposed uh, as much as in the U.S. So uh, uh, I studied engineering. I actually worked for the uh, for the Ministry of Education and, and Culture, doing some type of uh, job for the community, uh, but it was more in the administrative side of things. Uh, but when I moved to the to Pittsburgh, um, I realized that um, the exposure and how big the nonprofit sector is in the U.S. It's you know astonishing. It's 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 unbelievable. So in the research shows that the business sector or the profit sector is as big as the nonprofit sector in the U.S., which is not happening in Bolivia. Uh, the nonprofit right. sector and of course the public sector, which is also relevant in Bolivia. So. When I moved to Pittsburgh, first of all, I didn't know English, so it's been a, it was a challenge the first few months. Uh, but then I was part of a church, and I realized how even in a small church and you know, small communities, people have embedded in their culture uh, the giving, right? They, they give back to the community you are part of. They see something and do something about it right away, and give the resources towards that. Um, so I, you know knowing in my head uh, and having these pictures of uh, people that I was helping in Bolivia, I said, I have to do something about it. I, I think we can find the resources here. We can connect dots uh, between the US and, and Bolivia and do something. So instead of uh, studying a master's in business administration, as was my first um, a goal, I decided to pursue a master in public administration or master in nonprofit management. Um, so uh, with some few friends at church, I began talking about what I wanted to do in Bolivia, which was basically uh, giving some support to uh, kids living and working in the streets in La Paz, uh, in, in the, the downtown area. And so people got uh, passionate about it too. They shared my passion. They said, yeah, we want to help you. Um, so they, they be, we began with a small donation, sending some donations to Bolivia. Then I talk a few friends to Bolivia so they can connect with people there, with the people we want to serve. Because it's been a challenge, of course, being uh, overseas and saying, you know, there is a community in my country needing your, your resources or your right. help. So I, I talk people down there too, also to spend time with them um, so then I decided yeah I want to do a master's I want to become a uh, somebody who dedicates their life life and profession and career towards social work or to help people so um, and what do you say it's so true because really we are exposed every day in like our countries and of course on, on other countries too but not as much as we can probably see on the north right so we develop that kind of like um, being able to be to empathize with other people that are in need and the the, the fact that you actually hold to that to that feeling and took with you throughout your path from La Paz to Pittsburgh and to Pitt, from Pittsburgh to Vancouver it's definitely something that marks and the fact that you actually went to Pittsburgh uh, pursuing one career and then change it to another, it definitely sees how mature your feelings, uh, how you're go, uh, changing your feelings as your path uh, starts to grow. 
Um, so, okay, let's go back a little bit. From La Paz, you went to Pittsburgh, and then when you got there, you found yourself surrounded with all the tools and the people that could help you uh, finally do uh, put together the harmony of the Andes that you were telling us about. Uh, and you work here, you work from there with the youth uh, that are in need, right, uh, in La Paz. Please tell us a little bit about the experience. Yeah, so, um for sure, it's, uh, it was a, a challenge, uh, right? Uh, as I said, it, it was a challenge to say, hey, I'm a person who just arrived here to this country. I know you guys for a few months, uh, but I want you to help me, you, right? So, um, and <laughs> that's why I talk people down there. That's why I made my best to, you know, through a Skype and different things. And I use different, the internet is such a great tool for me to to show the impact that I wanna, I, I wanted to make uh, in Bolivia. So. Um, I think it's finding the right people. I, I think I was lucky enough to find friends who really believed on me because it's all about building relationships and connecting dots uh, that I was able to develop Harmony of the Andes, which is um, a Pittsburgh-based initiative because it was funded by uh, people from Pittsburgh uh, that help mm -hmm. uh, p uh, kids in youth, uh, at risk youth in La Paz, Bolivia. And we develop a soccer program where we talk about uh, HIV prevention so using uh, you know soccer because we know that soccer is part of our culture everybody loves soccer right. so we mm -hmm. have uh, simple soccer practices where let's say in a ball we would write some messages on how you can prevent HIV so kids uh, you know we raise awareness of HIV as, as a potential risk and also we teach them how to prevent that and in, in you know to um, not to see the HIV as a, as a taboo, right? Because in Bolivia, you HIV is kind of, uh, you know, an underground topic. But actually, we need yes. to face it. We need to raise awareness of that risk and educate people around it, right? So that is basically a soccer program with HIV prevention. So, oh, um, That's, and, um, let me ask you, is this soccer for boys and girls? Yes. Yes, uh, we uh -huh. were thinking to, yeah, we, we had a, a, a lot of discussions around it because we said, okay, you know, uh, sometimes that's another another taboo uh, that soccer is just right. for boys, but in the U.S., actually, women are the ones who love soccer more than than, uh, than men. So everybody in the U.S. was like, why don't you don't include girls? I'm like, well, in, in Bolivia, it's different. But I think the point with, with this program was more about uh, engaging youth in raising these conversations and talking about it, right? So um, mm -hmm. it wasn't just pursuing the soccer piece. Soccer was just a, a tool for us to, to be able to connect with them. So... That's um, that's what we have done, and along with a lot of dinners and things we have done in in on the streets. You know, basically we, uh, we I always thought about uh, the social work as uh, you being intentional about going there, right? Uh, going to the place you want to serve, uh, building relationships, and making sure that people know you first. Um, so we uh, we went. We began from just uh, sharing a meal or something uh, to playing soccer with them and, and teaching them some some education around HIV. Definitely. Um, that's something that is very, um, it's something that is uh, impressive actually because we can, with technology, if we're, it's easier now to connect and to send emails and maybe become friends with, with another people across the world, but actually ha being able to bring them to, to your reality and to share and to show them that what are the needs of some, a part of a society, like it's especially the youth in Bolivia, it's a great, a great, um, a great achievement. Okay, so from the Harmony of the Andes, you went to, you stayed in Pittsburgh and you work with Mayor William Peduto and his project, Welcoming Pittsburgh. I understand that this is a project that is, uh, it's very big and it touches different aspects or different needs in society. Uh, please tell us about that. Yeah, so by far, not that I don't like that, the job that I have right now, um, I love it and I'm passionate about what I do in Canada, but uh, by far that, the, working for the mayor in Pittsburgh was one of my best uh, experiences so far. Um, so 
from Harmony of the Andes, because of the challenges from uh, an international project, uh, we um, we didn't had an organization as nonprofit. We actually partner with another organization in Oregon uh, that also helps uh, uh, and works with youth in Peru. So we are actually having a partnership right now for Harmony of the Andes. So that gave me a lot of room for me to kind of find my own, uh, uh, you know, a, a job in the U.S. because uh, Harmony of the Andes was something that I it was in my heart and it's still there and I'm working towards that. Uh, but I also needed a job, a, you know, a normal right. job. So um, of from my master's degree, I, I began volunteering and I think that's something that I really want to emphasize here that youth, I would encourage uh, Bolivian youth to always think about doing some volunteering job. Uh, in the U.S. it's amazing how people, since they are, you know, 14, seven years old, they serve they all the time serve, they spend time with uh, helping people. So the uh, volunteerism in the U.S. is very well developed. And I think uh, I, I, and, and I think that's why they are uh, the nonprofit sector is as developed as the business sector. So um, right. I began volunteering yeah. in different organizations and actually organizations helping immigrants. Right. I was an immigrant and I struggled through the language barrier and a lot of things. So I, I wanted to help people like me who newcomers who were coming. So that's why I got um, uh, uh, in contact with the city of Pittsburgh. Um, they were developing this welcoming Pittsburgh initiative. I said, yeah, I can help you, you know, organizing community meetings or doing something. I want to help here. So um, I began volunteering and, you know, uh, I was working at Global Links, which is an international development organization, also with uh, projects in Bolivia. It was great uh, also being able to work there. And, uh, you know, Olina Sutton, uh, the mayor's office, office called me and said, hey, we know about the, how much uh, you, you love this and we want to invite you to um, be the run the program basically and be the manager of not only welcoming Pittsburgh serving immigrants but also uh, 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 caregivers and um, veterans also so special initiatives on behalf of the mayor um, so of course I said yes right away uh, I, I had an interview <laughs> and and yeah it's one of these things you know that happened all in a sudden I didn't even apply for the job no, it was just my passion it is something that it's the attitude it is the the attitude that you have to you know to approach this type of situations because sometimes you know we have uh, uh, people or some young people have some opportunities but due to their maybe um, being scared or afraid or missing home you know you just retreat yourself and you don't take it but having the the attitude to say yes i'll go i'll do it and sometimes not even looking for a pay not even looking for money it just opens a whole new world that maybe if you don't take the chance you won't be able to see it that's really great what you do absolutely uh, yeah and and um yeah, and you raise a very good point. Uh, I've never thought about uh, New York. Later, I understood that uh, yeah, the nonprofit sector ha can have some challenges in terms of finding you know a very well paid job. But later on, I didn't worry about that. Right. Uh, I think I was driven by by the cost, and so I accepted the job, even though it was terrifying. I have to say, yeah, I can be brave and say <laughs> yes, but then I'm like, oh my goodness, now how can I handle this, right? So of I. Because it was such a big uh, project, and you know, from being a non in a nonprofit in Global Links, working in my uh, zone of comfort, right? I I went to press conference representing the mayor nationally, going to another <laughs> city and talking about the, the mayor and being like having these cameras and, and you know the television like almost in a, twice a week or three times a, a week. Uh, it was such a big jump and uh, it's not something that I enjoy public uh, speaking is not my thing. So um, yeah, I, I remember in my interview I told the mayor like, yeah, I love this and I love the job. I hate public speaking though and he said no worries <laughs> you'll get used to it you'll you'll be fine i said okay well okay so uh that's why i run the welcoming pitwork and um uh, so it, it's been a, a great experience so 
we serve immigrants and I think it was such a rewarding job uh, seeing the, yeah. you know, and, and I, it was very, the, the time that I joined the mayor's office was very controversial because it was a few months before uh, the, the new administration that the U.S. have right now. So, mm. uh, you know, we were about promoting culture, promoting uh, uh, the diversity around the city, being a welcoming city. Yeah, so right. the, the change in the administration in the federal government with Trump, uh, uh, you know, well, first of all, I gained 20 pounds in two months because of the stress that I had trying oh to serve people. Um, so uh, people would, the immigrants were terrified about the situation. Uh, and because I felt like my friends were calling me, you know, I felt like these immigrants were my friends, were my, my sister, my siblings. They could easily be somebody that I knew. I wanted to help, right. so I I made myself available 24-7 for them and said, yeah, I can help you with whatever you need. And having a ma uh, the mayor on my side and he saying, tell me, Alexis, what you want from wow. me to serve the immigrant community. So I did a that lot of That completely research. changed I, the game for you, I'm sure. In a, in a all, uh, no another level, probably your expectations went from, I don't know, to 80 to 100. That's great. Yeah, so he gave me the room to say, Mayor, they need uh, ABC. And he's, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, go ahead and use resources, you you, you gotta do it. Um, so, you know, we, I was able to uh, create a whole new, a new different unit that worked towards enhancing the relationships between local law enforcement, our police, uh, local police, with the immigrant community. Uh -huh. uh, we created safe spaces for them to come to the table and talk about fears and talk about uh, taboos. Uh, so, uh, you know, I brought the immigrant community was struggling with landlords who were charged more uh, higher rents and stuff. So I was able to create a space uh, with the city to so landlords can come and immigrants can come and sit down at the table and say, what are your fears? What do you want from us and the city? <laughs> oh my God, so city we're going to support uh, and we are here for you. So, um, Alexis, so let me ask you, um, how in how long you you stayed in that job? I mean, how long did you work with uh, Welcoming Pittsburgh? Um, about a year. Uh, and the reason why I moved to Vancouver it was because I had a work authorization in the U.S. and. Um, you know, I think it, everything came together. When I always believe in everything has a purpose, right? So I had a job mm. for a purpose. I I feel like I, I couldn't be more happy of the, the, what I accomplished there. Um, but I'm at sure. the same time, after a year, I feel that it was time to change. Um, and I, I got an opportunity to move to Vancouver. And I said, okay, I'll move right. and see how how I go there. And um, that's, I, I decided to stay for me many reasons and one of them was of course the uh, the new climate in the US that is uh, a little bit uh, terrifying right. and a little okay. bit um, unstable for me to stay. Um, Ali, I'm gonna ask you now to tell us, because we're running out of time as always, but I want to go really fast to uh, Vancouver and you are working there with Pacific Community Resources Society. Please tell me about what are the specific groups of people that you work with? Yeah, so Pacific Community Resources Society, which is such a long name, um, and so they serve in many different cities here in the in BC in British Columbia. So we have um, residential programs, uh, houses for youth at risk uh, in Vancouver, in Surrey, in Keremias, uh, in different cities. Uh, so then we have um, youth centers where youth uh, at risk youth can come get a meal, be in a safe place to stay. Uh, it youth center so they can have um, you know computers available for anybody who would come between uh, 13 and 24 years old then they have employment services such a big piece of the organization where anybody newcomers youth um, adults can come and get a get help to get a good resume uh, to find a job people support right. you on finding a job and stuff like that so they do a lot of things in many different locations it's such a great organization uh, they are supported by the government here in, in, in BC. Oh, that's great to know. Um, we are going to find out more when we come back from the cut because we need to go to a cut right now. Ali, please wait for me uh, for a couple of minutes and people at home 
Don't go anywhere, stay connected. We'll be right back with the last question for Alexis Vargas. Stay connected. Welcome back everyone and I am so happy to have my guest Alexis Vargas today. We've been talking about social work in different places of this continent, Bolivia, uh, US and Canada. Uh, uh, Alexis, based on all of your experience, and I'm sure you've seen different cases and you met different types of people, please share with us um, what would you say is the most important attitude uh, or our way of feeling, our state of mind that you have to maintain while doing this type of work? Yeah, I would say that um, uh, being passionate about uh, what you do is key, right? So whatever you do, uh, if, if you are in the business sector, it's fine. Um, it's just that you need to, to do it with passion because then you're gonna feel about good about your job and if it's not part of your job just serving in the nonprofit sector then you can find ways to serve uh, so I, I think passion is is one of the the the, uh, the key points here and if you feel passionate about serving and you really want to live to serve uh, do it and 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 be patient I think because uh, it's not easy um, especially in, in countries where the social, social sector is not as developed as in, in the developed countries, it's very hard to, uh, to uh, it, it takes a while, right, to find the resources, connecting dots and, um, and, and building relationships. And the third one actually is building relationships. Uh, is, is when you have an opportunity to, uh, to do a project, even if, if it's a small project and you get a donation or you get something, build this relationship, uh, be transparent about using the resources so that you can build a very healthy relationship with the people are, that are supporting your mission, supporting your passion. Um, and then build relationships also with the people you serve because if they don't know you, um, it is very hard to make an impact in people that don't know you. They, they won't care about the services that you provide. They don't believe in you, right? So building relationships, being patient and being passionate about what you do, I think, are the key uh, aspects of uh, working in the nonprofit sector. Alexis, that's a great message, and I think it's it can apply to any type of work that somebody could do. Passion is definitely what makes the difference and what makes uh, our lives actually achieve something. I really want to thank you for the time you spent with us today. I am going to have uh, your information on this plate so people can see and know, know more about these um, organizations. I'll give you some space if you'd like to say a hello to Bolivia. Go ahead. Yeah, so as I said at the beginning of the interview, it's always great to say hi. I uh, I try to go to Bolivia at least once a year, and so um, hi everybody, and, and thank you for the opportunity to connect with Bolivia. If you have any questions or you have, uh, you know, you are passionate about this, I can I would be more than happy to connect with you. So um, just let me know. Thank you. Thank you, Ali. I hope you and I stay connected. Thank you. Bye. Until next time. Bye bye. Well, after saying and after listening to Alexis' experience, I want to say it to everyone that as an advice, do not wait to do something huge. Do not wait for the biggest opportunity. Just uh, be able to express your compassion every day. Look around the person you live with, the person you work with, the person you study with, you can always start your compassion and start uh, practicing it every day. And that would definitely open new worlds, new, new worlds and also new doors for you. Uh, taking the chance to listen, to understand and to act will definitely enhance your days. I will see everybody again in seven days with a new guest and a new topic. Do not forget, if you know somebody that is making a difference or is just doing uh, something great with their life, with their time, or is just helping others or helping themselves, and you think that the world should know about it, 
please send me an email. I would love to connect with you. My email address is conectadosbolivia24 at gmail.com. Do not hesitate to connect with me. I will see you in seven days. Stay connected, everyone. Goodbye.